Alright. What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. So I've got an iPad Pro 2018, which I've been using for basically everything university related for my second year at medical school, and I absolutely love it. It's completely changed the way that I take my notes, that I organize everything to do with my university life, and I couldn't say more positive things about it. Now this whole time for my note-taking app, I've been using Notability, and I found it to be a really good app for taking notes, for organizing all of my different lectures, tutorials, case-based discussions, etc. It's just been an overall great user experience. However, I know that there's another app called GoodNotes 5 that a lot of people use and there's sort of this matchup between Notability and GoodNotes 5. So what I decided to do was for a whole week of lectures, tutorials and case-based discussions, I was going to solely use GoodNotes 5 in order to test out the GoodNotes experience and then make this video comparing the two. I guess this is the equivalent of tech YouTubers putting their SIM card in the brand new phone that they're reviewing. So without further ado, these are the good and bad things about GoodNotes 5 and how they compare to Notability. Just so you guys have an idea of what my notes look like generally on Notability, this is one of my immune system lectures. And basically what I try and do is write things in three different columns, as you can see, with the words in blue being the headings of different slides and then underneath that all the different information. But what I want to point out is that I tend to include a lot of different images and screenshots of lecture slides in my notes. And that's something that's really, really important to me because I can copy them over, I can annotate them using different colors, I can manipulate the image, and that saves me a lot of time from having to redraw out all these different things. All right, so let's switch over to GoodNotes and take a look at that app. So starting off with the good things about GoodNotes 5, and trust me, there were a lot of things that I actually really enjoyed. I will love any feature that saves me time. For example, the first thing that you'll notice is over here in the top right, you have three different colors that are permanently set over there in the top bar. And of course you can change these to whatever you want. Let's say I wanna put red here, I can put green here. This is very, very useful because when I'm writing a note, usually I'll make my titles in blue, right? So let's say title of slide, and then I wanna to switch to gray. If gray was one of my set colors up here, then in just one click, I can switch to my gray pen and continue writing. Because in Notability, I spend so much time, for example, if I'm writing, and then I wanna switch colors, I have to go to orange, then if I wanna switch colors back, I need to go here and go to blue for my headings. It takes time. You might think that these small clicks aren't that important, but if you're doing hundreds and hundreds of those clicks per day, per lecture that you're writing, then it really adds up. So I really like the fact that there are some permanent colors at the top of GoodNotes 5. I personally think that that's a fantastic idea. The second amazing time-saving tool on GoodNotes 5 is their rubber function, which as you can see here, um, it has an auto deselect function. So what that means is that when you click the rubber and um, you decide to rub out something, for example, I just rubbed down that line, as soon as I'm done rubbing it out, it switches back to the pen, which is again, such a good efficiency and time saving thing. Let's say I'm writing hello and I accidentally misspell it and write hella, you click once on the rubber, once on the A and it's already back to the pen and I can write hello properly. Whereas in Notability, Let's say I was writing hello and I misspelled it. Oh God, that's disgusting. <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's say I was writing hello and I misspelled it. I'd have to go up to the rubber, erase the A, go back to the pen and then continue my spelling. Again, you might think that these things don't take up time, but really I'm doing this action over here, maybe hundreds and hundreds of times a day. Now I do want to point out that I know about the double tapping of the Apple Pencil to switch between the pen and the eraser. But personally for me, this feature just does not work well. It's actually such a slow thing to be writing, then stop, reorient your pen to find that little flat part, double tap, erase, and then double tap again, switch back. I find it very slow. I don't think it's a good feature um, and it just doesn't work for me. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about in GoodNotes is image manipulation, image importing, and stuff like that. I find their image manipulation software way, way, way better than Notability. So for example, let's say I'm here and I want to import a screenshot that I just took. For the sake of this video, let's screenshot some of my notes in Notability. I screenshot them here. Let's say I go back to good notes. Where is it? Perfect. So now, of course I can drag and drop like this, but sometimes that little thing in the corner disappears after a little bit of time and I don't quite get there. So let's just delete it for now. See, I was writing. I wanna import a picture. So you go up to this image tab over here and already right here in the top right corner, you can see all of my most recent images. And so it's very easy for me to quickly identify this one over here as the screenshot that I just took. I tap it once and it's already imported into my GoodNotes file. And also notice how quick that import was because I'm gonna compare it to Notability later. 
Look at how instant that import is, super, super fast. I can easily manipulate it from the corner. I can make it bigger, smaller, I can rotate it. And if I wanna crop it as well, I can just tap on the picture, click crop here and automatically make it bigger or smaller as I wish, click done and that's done really quickly. So the image manipulation in GoodNotes is so much better. Also pay attention to the fact that here as this image, there's no white borders as you will see there is in Notability. If I put the picture here, there's no white borders over here around the image. There's nothing there, which is really, really great. In comparison to all of this, let me show you how Notability works. So Notability, let's say I wanna import that exact same screenshot that I just took. Let's find some white space here. So in order to import an image here, you need to go to the plus, and then you need to go to photo, then you need to go to recently added, then you need to click your image and look at how long it takes to import. Again, not an objectively long period of time, but when you're doing this hundreds of times a day, it all really adds up. And look at this white space that it leaves behind it next to the writing. You see this over here? I dislike this a lot. It leaves this white border around the image when you import it into Notability. Now, if I want to manipulate this image, first of all, you have to switch to this T tab up here. So from the pen to the T, and then you can click on the image and manipulate it. And in order to manipulate it, as you can see, every time I move it, there's this lagging period. Whereas in GoodNotes 5, there's absolutely none of this. It just immediately moves around. On top of that, if I want to crop this image, which I always want to crop the screenshots that I take, look at the process I have to do. So I've imported the image, I have to hit edit, go up here to the cropping tool, crop as I wish, then hit done. Again, it's such a slow process. And once I move it, you'll see that there are these white borders still all around the image. So yeah, image manipulation and notability, I think is probably one of its worst features. I wish that they would improve it and I'm sure they will in a future update, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. All right, now let's talk about the highlighting tool in GoodNotes. Just for comparison, let me show you guys the highlighting tool in Notability first. So here's my highlighter. I've selected this light blue color. If I wanted to highlight this sentence down here, I can do so. And it basically just gives you a free range, uh, transparent color that you can draw over your notes. So it doesn't really stick to the words that you've written. It doesn't really make a straight line. It's sort of just like the pen, but it's translucent or transparent. Now, if I move over to GoodNotes 5, you'll see how much better the highlighting feature is there. When you highlight a sentence, it automatically straightens it out. As you can see, it makes a nice straight line that adjusts to the height of your notes and your writing. And I find this so much better. Look, if I don't draw the straightest of lines, it'll automatically straighten it. And I find that so useful. It just looks so much more neat and it looks better and is easier to go through than Notability. So if you're someone who highlights a ton, then yeah, I would definitely go with GoodNotes 5. And then let's talk about something that's actually really important. If you take a look at my Notability, you'll see that I have something like 300 different files in here. Let me see at the very top, 337 different files. So there's a lot of different notes that I've taken here over the last couple of months, and there's a lot of information to search through. So for example, if I wanted to search for a lecture on um, kidney diseases and glomerular nephritis, okay? Let's say I wanted to search, I'll search glomerular, all right? And let's see what comes up. No results found. Okay, fine, let's search kidney. Okay, so it gives me searches of the titles of lectures, so anything that's written in text. The amazing thing about GoodNotes 5 is that it searches within the handwritten notes that you've made, which I just think is absolutely incredible. So for example here, you can see that my handwriting is pretty horrible. Um, it's definitely not neat by any means, but let's say that I wanna search for this word here, tension, all right? Let's see if it'll find it. Honestly, how incredible is that? If you ask me, this word does not look like tension. Yet, GoodNotes still manages to find those words. I'm honestly quite happy that I found some of the words. Previously, when I had been searching through my notes, I could never find what I wanted. Um, so it's actually good to see. So I guess the searching of the handwritten notes does work, but not as good as GoodNotes 5. All right, so those are some of the things that I really enjoyed while using GoodNotes 5. Now let me talk about some of the things that I don't like as much. So first things first, as you'll see while I'm scrolling through this page here, there's just like a noticeable lag. You can see that some pictures and images take a while to load. It's not smooth when you're scrolling, when you're moving around and manipulating this software. Different parts of the page load at different times. If I'm gonna be staring at this app and using it all day, I want to make sure that it's fluid, that it's moving nicely, and that I don't feel like there's any interruptions when I'm using the app. 
So that's the first not so great thing about Good Notes 5. Now the second thing, and this probably isn't too major for a lot of people, is that it just kind of looks outdated to me. I don't know about you, but all of these icons at the top here, it feels like this was an app that was made a couple of years ago and they haven't updated it and made it for the modern era. But yeah, just to me, it kind of looks out of date. Now, something important that I noticed while using GoodNotes 5 for about a week is that my handwriting was a lot more messy on GoodNotes 5. I don't know why, so let's see if I can demonstrate this. Um, what is that sentence that includes every letter of the alphabet? The quick brown fox jumps over something. Anyway, there's the quick brown fox. I mean, I don't think it looks particularly good. In fact, I'm sure you guys will let me know how bad my handwriting is in the comments. But let's see if I can rewrite this here. The quick fox. I mean, you guys probably won't be able to tell too much of a difference. The thing that I noticed in GoodNotes is that it sort of takes your lines that you draw and it sort of changes them. It either straightens them or makes them a little bit less squiggly or something like that. And I found that Notability does the same, but they do them to a different extent. When I'm writing on good notes, it feels like I'm using my pen to write on a very slippery surface of glass, which is obviously what the iPad is, but it makes it seem a lot more slippery as if I don't have enough traction and control with the pen. Whereas when I'm writing on Notability, it feels a little bit more like my handwriting is on a piece of paper, not in the tactile feel between the pen and the iPad, obviously, because it's the same in both cases. But in GoodNotes, what my handwriting looks like is that it's like sliding across the page a lot more. It's not as grippy, almost, if that makes sense. I'm not sure how they managed to simulate that with software, but that is the end result that I end up feeling. So yeah, I'd say that my handwriting looks a little bit better on Notability, and it doesn't feel like my pen is slipping around on the page as much. The next thing that I wanna mention in GoodNotes is sort of their hierarchical structure or organization of the notes. So in GoodNotes, how it works is that you have these sort of, you have these folders over here, and then you have these um, files within them, and then within the files you have all these different pages, or these are notebooks, I guess. I personally don't like this as much as the Notability equivalent. So in Notability, you have these uh, bigger sections called dividers, which is what these little drop-down menus are. Then within dividers, you have subjects, so respiratory disease one, respiratory disease two, and then within those subjects, you have all these different notes. So for example, I have important stuff, uh, one of my case-based discussions, some lectures over here, and I find this level of organization a lot more neat, a lot more simple and intuitive to understand and work through, and so it works better for me. I personally really like Notability's organizational structure than GoodNotes. And then the last thing that I wanna say about GoodNotes 5 is that it's lacking a sister or brother app on Mac iOS or on PC, um, where you can look at your notes online on the computer, which is kind of frustrating for me actually. With Notability, what I'll often do is have some of my previous notes that I want to look at open on my computer, and then some other notes that I'm currently writing open on my iPad. And that way I can have both at the same time. If I'm somewhere without my iPad and I wanna look at my notes on my laptop, then I can't really do that. All right, and I think that concludes everything that I wanted to say about GoodNotes 5 in comparison to Notability. In conclusion, is GoodNotes 5 good enough to get me to switch over and use it as my primary note-taking app? And I think for me, the answer is going to be no. Although GoodNotes has a lot of good features sort of separate to each other, it doesn't package them into one finished product that combines all those good features and makes an app that I would want to use on a daily basis. What I wish would happen is that Notability would adopt those two features of the eraser that just gets used once and switches back to the pen, and then also having your favorite colors stacked at the top of the toolbar. I hope you guys have found this video useful. I hope it's given you a little bit more of an insight into comparing GoodNotes and Notability so that you guys can hopefully make a better informed decision about which one you want to purchase and use as your note-taking app. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. If you guys enjoy these iPad related videos, there's a lot more topics that I can cover on them. So do let me know in a comment down below. That's it for me. Thank you guys.